In today's episode, I will introduce you to a country that faces an incredibly challenging start, specifically the fallen empire of Mali. Step by step, I'll show you how to build a powerful economy to get this achievement, and a strong enough army to accomplish this achievement by taking colonies from European powers. This way, it'll be more interesting. The difficulty, however, is that this African kingdom is already in decline from the very beginning. So, I have crippling modifiers here, lots of rebellions here, additional negative events here, here I lack feudalism, and here I face increased technology costs and here a lack of religious tolerance. Here is a powerful military country comparable to Prussia. And over here are powerful colonial nations that will discover me within 30 years. Yes, it's going to be fun. And here are two level 20 gold mines that cannot collapse. Later in the video, you'll find out how to make them. But for now, that's a secret. Greetings, imperialists. Lucas here. Mali Iron Man, let's go. As you've seen, the situation for this African kingdom is really tough. So first off, I'll tackle the missions on the right side of Mali's mission tree. Completing each one reduces the number of rebellions. The first two missions, if done right, can be completed almost immediately. Therefore, I'll head to the estates to select the privileges for extra military and diplomatic points. Then, I'll sell crown land. With the money from the sale, I hire advisors. Level 2, so I get 6 points of each kind. By completing this mission, I get rid of extra pretender rebels and receive a few points. Always something good. The second mission gives me a stability point, which is unfortunate because it would be more useful later, but it does reduce estate-related rebellions. In my test game, these rebellions appeared very frequently, really frequently, almost every two or three months. Now, the only remaining mission prevents minority rebellions. Fortunately, not these, because I have quite a few of them. This concerns the core regions here, specifically Kabu and Segu. My next goal is to implement feudalism as soon as possible in the country, so I had to... That is, my successor had an accident. And I handed out the remaining privileges that are essential to have no cheaper advisors, as I didn't want to raise stability costs, since that'll be an ongoing problem. In hindsight, that was a mistake. I should have done it after the first war. I'm removing cavalry from the army. Tough luck. I hire a mercenary company and recruit the ruler as a general. Why not? At least he has a siege bonus. Now, my next goal is to implement feudalism as quickly as possible. I bring in a scholar to reduce aggressive expansion. I form an alliance with Songhai, the only valuable country in the area. And I must decide whether I want to be a tolerant country or convert everything to Islam. Generally, you'll want to be as tolerant of other religions as possible, especially with those two privileges. And there are quite a few non-believers in the region. Therefore, my kingdom of Mali will be a tolerant country. This allows me to complete the mission that increases tolerance for other religions for 25 years. At the same time, I can complete my Mansa to Arms mission, which grants me a lot of territorial claims. On November 30th, Jolof, Jenna, where's Kong? Why isn't Kong my rival? Everything's an uphill battle. December 1st, Mali collapses. Literally. And I get to enjoy these wonderful modifiers. On December 12th, I declare war on Jolof. Not for vassalization, I want to conquer these territories for myself. War scandal in Mali, a battle with Jolof, which I barely win. I suffered heavy losses. The Jolof army retreats somewhere while I capture their territories. Meanwhile, I found Jolof's army. A female ruler? Probably not. I conquer Jolof entirely for myself and take their money. I also gain 4% crown land from conquering Jolof. It would have been more if my estates had less influence. I also complete the mission to subjugate the region and almost immediately get an event saying Jolof wants independence. What the heck? But being clever, I release Jolof as an independent vassal, outsmarting the rebels. Releasing Jolof is super important. This country has a mission that implements feudalism in their capital. Normally it would require several government reforms, but now it's instant. And since Jolof, upon release as my vassal, has a high opinion of me. I also gain the institution from them. And there it is, feudalism. It'll be implemented immediately in my province as well. Now that I have the institution, I'll complete this mission to appease national minorities in my country. I developed the province of Gabu, primarily using administrative and military points. I also developed the port, which reduces development costs by 5%. I remember the infrastructure at level 15 development. And after a moment, I can accept this culture and complete the mission for accepting national minorities. Phew, now my country will be more peaceful. To think it used to take 15 years to complete this mission tree. So having stabilized my country, it's time for more wars and an attack on Janet to humiliate them, especially since Kong won't respond to their call to arms. Unfortunately, I had to ask for a lot of access around the fort in Jene to capture their last province. Soon after, I managed to destroy their entire army, right in their capital. But now my troops have a really long journey ahead to occupy everything here. Sadly, Timbuktu has me as a rival. So... They won't grant me passage. 
My heir was born, though I don't foresee a bright future for him. To keep things challenging, my vassals have now gained an additional 50% liberty desire. I attacked Jenne with the humiliate Cassus belly, so I can only either make a show of strength or humiliate the country. I opt for a show of strength, which will earn me lots of points. Now it seems this kingdom might fall into Songhai's hands. After the wars, I'm reducing autonomy everywhere and focusing primarily on developing my gold mines. Conveniently, I have two. Despite my efforts, I still have peasant uprisings and they're putting up a real fight. I decided to use Songhai to attack my rival, Timbuktu, and I'll humiliate them too. But unfortunately, my alliance with Songhai likely won't last as they've just made Jenne their vassal and I need that province. Meanwhile, I finished upgrading my two gold mines to level 10. Any further wouldn't make sense, at least for now. After the victorious war, I could finally... Uh, my heir had another unfortunate accident. But luckily, feudalism has now appeared in Gabu. I only need to defeat the rebels now. Though it's no easy feat, it's actually quite bloody. Eventually, I made manual claims on Kong because embarrassingly I didn't realize I needed to increase autonomy in the province instead of lowering it. Who normally increases autonomy in this game? Because of this, I can't do anything here for the next 25 years. Luckily, this this war will shorten my truce with Timbuktu. Kong was conquered, giving me access to another gold mine, just as well, since I've had very few rebellions in the country. Maybe I'll get lucky and my ruler will die. Despite the rebellions, I kept pushing forward with my conquests, though I probably won't summon each country individually to this war. One, three, five, really. Unfortunately, despite my best hopes, my ruler is still alive, but I've gained new territories. So I take the risk and honestly demand an heir. 4, 4, 3 and 10 years old. He'll do always better than his father. Unfortunately, I've become Songhai's only possible rival, so my alliance with them has ended. At last, my useless ruler has died and two years ahead of schedule, so I didn't have to abdicate him. In 1464, finally, a decent ruler took the throne in this country. Mali's stability, though, has hit rock bottom. I then annexed Jolof and implemented the institution of of feudalism in my country using cheap loans to fund it. Now I was facing a period of intense conquest. So I switched my focus to administrative matters. In December, I launched an invasion of Timbuktu first. Of course, things couldn't be straightforward and I immediately faced a peasant revolt. Though for Mali, this seems to be standard. Timbuktu itself fell quite quickly. My opponent's troops are annoyingly elusive and keep retreating to the far end of my country. Probably for the 10th time. I really won't be raising that stability. Before waging war against Songhai, I decided to first target some smaller tribes in this region and opted for an era advancement that reduces aggressive expansion. I was surprised, however, by the strength of the armies my opponents managed to field. It didn't matter much, as I had a technological advantage of up to two levels. Part of their forces I managed to quickly crush to dust. I occupied the territories of my enemies. Of course, more rebellions. After seizing part of the smaller principalities, I laid claims to other neighboring tribes, prioritizing the most developed provinces. But what? Benin has a fourth level of military military technology? After these conquests, a coalition is not likely to form against me. My ruler has proven to be a very cautious commander, aligning with my strategy for conquering the region. Before the next wars, I reached the fifth level of technology, which gave me an edge in the formation of new military units. I recruited new mercenary companies as the previous ones had worn out a bit. I began further consolidation of the smaller tribes and after subduing these tribes, I pressed claims on additional territories. Minor uprisings were quickly quelled, just another day in Mali, and I attacked more principalities. I also had to gradually introduce the Renaissance in my country. I selected the province of Cantor for this purpose, as it lies between the developed province of Gabu and my own gold-producing province, which is also well developed. This should spread the renaissance across my entire country fairly quickly. Oh look, a new tribe has emerged nearby, Fulo. We could switch to playing as them, but I declined the offer. With the next government reform, I introduced an edict for higher 50% taxes across the board, which should favorably impact my country's economy. Everyone knows high taxes develop a country, right? I don't even know how many times this has happened to me, maybe 20? Let me know how many times your stability dropped while playing Mali. After winning yet another war and claiming new territories, I decided to release vassals on the conquered lands. Fortunately, this was also the time I could complete the mission to increase autonomy in Segu. Seriously, why is there a mission no one ever completes? As for the mission that raises my stability, I'll save that for later. After subduing most of these smaller African principalities, it was a good moment to invade Songhai and finally conquer their territories. It turned out my forces were stronger than those of Songhai. This advantage stemmed primarily from technological advancements, but I still incurred heavy losses. In truth, I forgot to provoke a rebellion before the war with Songhai, which was now coming back to bite me. No way, more revolts. Songhai was already too large an empire to conquer in one war, so I took all their original territories. I also took 
quite a bit of their money. I checked and I don't eat that area according to my missions. And after these wars, I became a major power. I assigned part of the newly conquered provinces to my vassal while keeping the rest for myself. I also invaded Fulo as it's necessary for establishing my empire. Where did they get a fort in that desert? Never mind, more revolts. I haven't seen one in a while. Just kidding, I deal with them constantly. Though I'd have even more if I hadn't completed those missions. Now all that remains is to suppress all the revolts and conquer Fulo. Which I'm doing now. What the heck? Well, Fulu is gone. Situation stabilized. Now I can finally complete those missions. Oh, Songhai is now an accepted culture. Nice. I could move my capital to Timbuktu and that seems like a good idea. I'll wait on colonizing that desert though, since I may contact the Spanish earlier than I'd planned. Never mind, at this point the empire is restored and the authority of Mali is regained, which should finally end this disaster. Glory to Mali. Till the end of the game. Only this many points for surviving all that? Come on, it should be 1000 points at least, the return to the former glory of Mali. Like a miracle. The Mali Empire survived internal struggles for power among factions, convinced the subjects to remain loyal to the Mansa, and even united the royal court. Even better, the old borders of the Mali Empire have been restored and, as such, the influence the Aram once had in West Africa. I would say I conquered much more. At least that's how it seems to me. I think I'll be facing a civil war. My ruler has very low support and I can't even abdicate him. I introduced the renaissance immediately in Kantor, so it should now spread everywhere else. The last African states are no longer a challenge and I will conquer them without much trouble. Especially since in battles, I'm practically crushing them. Almost everything is conquered now. After taking control of nearly all the countries in the region, a brief period of stabilization, expansion, suppressing revolts and preparing to conquer Songhai in the future lies ahead. My main task now is to monitor upcoming revolts and send troops to suppress them as quickly as possible. I'll probably have a civil war soon, but there's nothing I can do about it, unless my ruler dies. Everywhere I can, I'm also reducing autonomy, which will increase revolts, but since I already have many, I'll use mercenaries to suppress them rather than my main army. After reducing autonomy, it's really necessary to reduce inflation though it's rising rapidly in my country. Luckily, I can now afford level 3 advisors who are half the usual cost. I'm also adding all newly conquered provinces to my states. After all, I'm an empire, so I can afford this gesture. I lower autonomy again, sell crown lands, which allows me to introduce institutions in my country. Finally, I issue additional tax edicts everywhere possible. This brings in decent revenue, to the point where Portugal ceases to be my rival. They're simply too weak, Morocco is my rival now. Time to choose the first ideas and here I might surprise you. One of the best options is to choose the innovative ideas first since it reduces technology costs. There's a monument in this region that also decreases technology costs. Another 10% reduction comes from Dimi support and an additional 10% when piety is at 100%. Altogether this results in a pretty nice reduction. A good alternative is also taking economic ideas similar to Hungary or if you want to play tall from the beginning where you develop your provinces there's nothing better than infrastructure and aristocracy democratic ideas as a start. But as I mentioned, I'll go with innovative and for now, while I wait to fill the bar to 1000 points, I'll go with humanist. Perhaps I'll get an event for cheaper idea development, civil war. Yay, during the civil war, my support from the Mossi population increases. My king had a very unfortunate accident, long live his successor, whose support I raise immediately. This ended my civil war and boosted stability by 3 points. Hey, that was worth it and Songhai disappears. Sigh, I'm almost at max points. Unfortunately, I didn't get the event for cheaper ideas, so I'll have to pick exploratory ideas. They are necessary for completing this mission that will allow me to colonize South America. For colonial policy, I choose assimilation, since I'll mostly use the colonies to occupy areas in Africa. Remember, the more native population we have here, the higher will be boost local goods production, which will later lead to greater income. Now I'm setting out to find the lost fleet. To do this, I split off three ships from my trade fleet and send them to discover South America. Since I started colonizing the gold coast of Africa, it's time for peace here. I also discovered new land. What happened there? I got territorial claims. Wow. But honestly, it's better to wait until Portugal has established a larger Brazil and then conquer it, since these claims are permanent. Fourth advancement, and this one is extremely important. Essentially, it gives you free mysticism or legalism at the cost of one stability point. 200 points of mysticism or legalism. There's also an interesting monument in the province of Jene, especially if you plan to convert provinces of other religions. Best of all, you can get this monument practically for 1000 gold, upgraded to the third level. 
you just need to have 1000 gold upgraded and complete the mission to conquer this province. With this event, besides upgrading the province, you get two free upgrades, with the third on the way. Best of all, it costs as if you were paying for the first level upgrade, so in total you're spending around 2000 gold. Check it out, it takes 10 years to finish. I'm mainly building this monument for the additional monthly piety acceleration bonus of 0.3. I also complete the mission to control the Niger River, which is, of course, very powerful. Sometimes it's worth waiting until you've developed your ideas and launched the Golden Age before using it. For 25 years, you get this bonus for all provinces with rivers in the Niger region, covering a large area. And interestingly, I also have the bonus in the Sahel, right? This is the Sahel? Well, I'll use this bonus to introduce colonialism in Gao. After a few more years, I finally managed to bring inflation down, so it was time to spend my 4000 gold, primarily on production workshops. At this stage of the game, building temples is no longer worthwhile. I also launched an invasion of Morocco to seize the gold mine there. Morocco swiftly captured my fortress. Remarkably fast, actually. But after breaking through, I set out for their fortress myself, and probably straight toward the capital right afterward. I also initiated a golden age to reduce the cost of developing new ideas. Fezan will be my vassal soon, why not? Gao now has a 15% development cost reduction, when it has reached level 39 with colonialism. Sometimes I genuinely hate this game. Now it's time to catch up on diplomatic technology for 250 points. Gotta love it. From Morocco I took a huge amount of money, war reparations, and all the provinces you can see here. I'll build fortresses in each location, creating a solid foothold for future wars with Spain, Portugal, or even Aragon from the looks of it. After outfitting the country with workshops, I'm now earning over 100 gold. Innovation has also arrived in Mali. Nice. I introduced colonialism and caught up on military technology. A new country emerged, but its freedom didn't last long. After advancing my ideas to the point of gaining extra discipline, my next goal was to get some funds from European countries to boost my economy. Especially since I had plenty of manpower for this war. So I laid claim to Fez. Castile is usually wealthier than Portugal, so I attacked. Oh, Poland is here too. Alright, I quickly took a province in Maghreb and I must admit that my opponents don't stand a chance against me, probably because they lack leadership. A beautiful victory. Don't run, come here. Oh, they arrived. That's bad. I'm retreating. After the war with Spain, I took over the remaining smaller provinces in the region. The money I acquired went into building courthouses since I was running low on governing capacity and I still had the entire Congo to conquer. I was earning 150 gold with 50 net, but it would still take 3 more technology levels before I'd see returns from this region, as most resources here require a trade station. I managed to establish a steady route to Maghreb and honestly, why should I worry? about improving relations with these nations. Portugal turned out to be a tough opponent, costing me significant manpower. Yet, they fell. This war was far bloodier than expected. After finishing my conquest in Maghreb, my next goal was the Congo. My first targets in Congo were Ivory Coast territories, along with provinces enabling further conquest. However, I need to pause for now, as I have institutions to establish in Timbuktu. Printing press, to be precise. I also shifted my trade to the Ivory Coast, but that turned out to be a bad idea, yielding 10 gold less. The Ivory Coast isn't ideal for collecting trade because of competition from numerous nations, including colonial powers, unless I conquer that monument in Kilwa. My first move in the religious era was to increase my conquest capacity, and I already know whom I'll target since I've just discovered the entire map. An alliance with the Ottoman Empire also became possible, which I accepted. I could now get a sense of how Europe looked. Poland has a union over Austria, interesting. In the following decade, I conquered the entire Congo region, slightly enlarging my empire's name on the map. Meanwhile, I finally reached technology level 14, unlocking many new manufactories to build. Only provinces with a trade bonus in the Congo joined the trade company, giving all remaining provinces a goods production bonus. For some strange reason, market buildings are being constructed in non-trade bonus provinces, which should be dismantled. Nearby provinces were colonized by Utrecht rather than Castile, so I declared war for that territory. This small conflict with Utrecht turned into a larger one than anticipated, especially at sea. But that's what allies are for. And I think I may have just triggered a religious war in the Holy Roman Empire. Oops. Still, I quickly took what I wanted. After building manufactories in the Futajalon region, I could complete a potent economic mission for us, gold and ivory, which in reality wasn't that powerful, a supposed powerful privilege. Here it is, which actually reduces the risk of our gold supply collapsing, but also decreases our gold mine production, requiring further development. I wonder if that nets a profit. More wars in Iberia allowed me to complete my trade missions. It turned out I could buy a European colony. What? 2000 for Malta. 
I'll take it. So now I have the Alhambra, Malta and only need to seize 4 Portuguese colonies and judging by what I see they have some nice ones. But first I need to know where to conquer so I stole maps of Brazil. It's not that big, I'm also making nearly 200 gold net monthly so soon I'll be able to donate 10,000 gold to a major power. The best part is that I'm not even focused on profit oriented ideas except for economic ones. I also sent a gift to the Ottoman Empire completing a mission to prepare for a pilgrimage. Now I can send my ruler to Europe, advisors to Europe, or even embark on a pilgrimage to Mecca. Hmm, I think I'll send my ruler to Europe. The Great Pilgrimage, it seems to have reached Tunis and I can now give them 8000 gold, losing 2000 myself which adds 3.5% inflation. They accept it! Wait, I spent the 8000 gold? I have a feeling there may be more expenses coming. I could do the same for the Andalusian Sultanate, but it no longer exists and my ruler died. I'll need to check what this pilgrimage leads to in the end. But no matter, at this point I declared war on Portugal and Castile to seize their colonies. Of course, I could use an invasion fleet I completely forgot about. And there we go, all of Brazil in a single war, which now allows me to establish an additional settler for 25 years plus 800 ducats. Definitely useful. Look, I've reached 15 development level and a minus 100% chance for my gold mine to collapse. Interesting. Now I have virtually zero risk of a gold mine collapse. Level 20 with a 0% chance? Impressive. My first colony has been established. Since I had such excellent gold mines, I decided to attack Kilwa. There's a lot of gold mines here. I then gathered 10,000 gold and sent it to Poland, of course. Supporting my homeland is essential. An easy and satisfying achievement completed. I subsequently conquered more provinces to establish additional colonies. The second colony was formed then the third and the fourth. So my second achievement is complete. My empire now has 421 gold in revenue. As you can see, my ideas aren't focused on profit. I'm well ahead in technology and can field a substantial army. I have a very noticeable name on the map. In this episode, I try to conquer the world in Hearts of Iron 4. The difficulty is that I haven't played this game for many years. That's why the episode came out quite funny.